Good evening, everyone. Welcome to tonight's Common Council meeting. As always, before we start our meeting, we ask uh, our city clerk to read the quote of the week. Thank you, Mayor. A no uttered from deepest conviction is better and greater than a yes, merely uttered to please, or what is worse, to avoid trouble. Thank you very much. <laughs> call a 22nd meeting of the Common, Common, Common Council to order. Please call a roll. Boren. Excuse. Bauk. Here. Decker. Here. Gisha? Here. Hannah? Here. Heidemann? Here. Kittleson? Here. Kleinus? Here. Meyer? Here. Montemayor? Here. Rinfleisch? Excuse. Ryan? Here. Surik? Here. Vanderweel? Here. Verhasselt? Here. And Wangaman? Here. 14 present. Quorum is present. This time I'd ask everyone rise. Elder Gisha, would you please lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Gisha. Approval of the minutes, President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the minutes be approved. There's motion and second. Any discussion? There being none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Minutes stand approved. Resignations, Attorney McLean. Thank you, Your Honor. There's a letter to the mayor from uh, Patrick Dugan advising that he's resigning from the group uh, health insurance and wellness committees effective immediately. Get a motion to accept and file? Motion to accept and file. Motion and second. In, under discussion. There is none. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Resignation accepted. To you. Uh, Mayor's appointments. Uh, I hereby submit the following appointment for your consideration. Todd Thone to be considered for the Board of Contractors Examiners to fill the unexpired term of Andrew Hopp, which expires April 30, 2009. Todd Thone will join the committee as an alternate. Dan Dawn will move from alternate to full member, signed by the mayor. This one lies over. Michael Johnson to be considered for appointment to the Wellness Committee to fill the unexpired term of Patrick Dugan, whose term expires on 4-30-09, signed by the mayor. Lies over also. Michael Dietz to be considered for appointment to the Group Health Insurance Committee to fill the unexpired term of Patrick Dugan, whose term expires on 4-30-09. Also lies over. Uh, then Angela Payne to be appointed as Director of Human Resources and Labor Relations commencing February 16, 2009 and expiring February 15, uh, 2014. Signed by the Mayor. You have a motion to confirm. President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I make a motion to confirm the appointment of Angela Payne as Director of Human Resources and Labor Relations. Is there a second? Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. All of them are Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I just would like to know, I was looking over the employment history uh, for Angela, and I'd like to know a little bit about these uh, last few positions. Uh, they're rather short term, and I would like to know, uh, were they you know, interim positions? Uh, what was the reason uh, for their short, shortness of duration? Susan, would you like to? We, uh, I would prefer not to ask uh, the candidate herself. We've, we've never made this a practice before. Uh, I did send out a bio to all of you. Susan? Yes. On Angela's application and resume, um, she was an HR director in Cincinnati and then moved on to Chicago. Uh, she worked for a nonprofit agency and then was asked to follow the executive director as he took over another nonprofit agency. Um, while she was there, she had the opportunity to go to work for Tower Automotive. Tower Automotive, as I understand it, filed bankruptcy. And um, after uh, the merger, they brought in their own team. And so Angela has been an adjunct professor since then. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other discussion? If not, please call the roll. Bauk? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gesha? Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunis? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Surik? Aye. 
Aye. Vanderweel Aye. for Hasselt Aye. and Wangaman. Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries, appointment is confirmed. Uh, Angela, uh, Angela, would you please stand up and be recognized? Thank you very much, congratulations. <laughs> Thank you and welcome to the team. Thank you, Council. Please continue. Tom Brickley to be considered for appointment to the Business Improvement District to fill the unexpired term of Richard Grinke, whose term expires 4-10-2010. Signed by the Mayor. And I need a motion to confirm. President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd make a motion to confirm the appointment of Tom Brickley to the Business Improvement District. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There is none. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstain. One abstention. Motion carries. Thank you very much. Next item on the agenda is a public forum. Madam City Clerk. Yes, this evening we have one person on public forum. That would be Henry Capitillo, if you would please come to the front. And Henry, can I have your home address, please? Yes, that's uh, 1619 North 38th Street, Town of Sheboygan. And you will have five minutes, sir. Okay, thank you. My observation on the question, question of openness and transparency of this administration is that it seems to pick and choose when it wants to be open and readily disseminate information to the general public on pending issues. Do you think that this administration has been open and candid with information to the people of Sheboygan when it pertains to how it governs? Is this administration accessible to new arguments or new ideas? Let me give you three examples of the openness that exists within these council chambers. First example is an issue that has been openly discussed over three council meetings with an estimated time of discussion to be well over one hour. The issue pertains to two janitorial positions that involve the Public Works Department and the Police Department. The cost of these two positions is $130,000 and was referred back to committee and will probably be discussed at another council meeting, making a total of four council meetings of discussion. The second example is an issue that was presented three council meetings ago, ago and received about 10 minutes of discussion during the suspension of the rules. This issue was a $7.5 million housing project. During the discussion of this project, approximately three older persons asked what kind of housing project it was. The older person requesting this for suspension of the rules explained that it was, it was a $7.5 million housing project on the former Kingsbury Brewery Brownfield site. With budget constraints and the economy being in such a mess, you would have thought that someone would have asked how much property tax revenue would be generated by this project. Another question that could have been asked was did the city have to give any kind of concessions to the developer for the project such as land, tax breaks, grants, loans, or property tax concessions? I want to make it perfectly clear that I do not have an opinion on the project, whether good or bad. I just feel that when a $7.5 million project is brought to this council, more discussion should be placed so that the taxpayers of Sheboygan know the benefits that it will provide and what is the cost to the city, if any. I was here at the council meeting and was surprised by the lack of discussion on this issue. The third example is an issue that was also presented in the council meeting three council meetings ago and received about five minutes of discussion during the motion to file. The issue was regarding a request to conduct an independent audit of the health insurance fund for the city of Sheboygan employees. During the discussion on the motion to file, it was brought up that the insurance fund had was to be, in, which was to be included would be audited this year by Shank. If you review resolution number 128-07-08, the insurance rates for 2000 are as follows. Single plan, 565.50. Family plan, 1,355.20. Retiree single, 463.74. Retire, retiree's family plan, 927.64. If you review resolution number 12807-8, the insurance rates for 2009 are as follows. Single plan, $670. 
Family plan, $1,574. Retiree singles, $563.74. Retiree's family plan, $1,127.49. The following are the percentage of premiums increased from 2008 to 2009. Single plan, 16.8%. Family plan, 16.2%. Retiree single, 21.5%. Retiree family plan, 21.5%. If you recall, there was quite a bit of controversy when the recommendation was made to change your TPA third party administrator from Prairie States to Humana by, the, by this administration. In fact, during the Monday, December 11, 2006 Salaries and Grievance Committee, both the Finance Director, Rich Gephardt, and Human Resource Director, Ed Surick, said there would be no cost savings and they strongly recommended not to change the TPA. Consequently, both city employees received a reprimand from, this, from the mayor because of their comments at the meeting. In hindsight, it might have been worth considering these more than 25-year employees' recommendation. I say this because the county, which still has Prairie States as their third-party administrator, is only seeing a 2.1% increase in premiums. Since the city has already deplete, depleted the insurance reserve fund, by over a million dollars when it was transferred to the general fund to, to reduce the deficit. Excuse me, Henry, the, would you like your additional minute? Yes. Go ahead. It would seem that the council would be concerned that they really did not have any cost savings when the TPA change, in fact, now seem to be seeing a greater increase in insurance premiums. It is usually customary for a self-insured plan to have a reserve of between 15 to 20 percent in order to meet any dramatic shortfalls, which certainly not the present situation in the city's insurance reserve fund. It is my understanding the city will pay hundreds of thousands of dollars more for 2009 health insurance cost. I ask, I ask you, does not a $7.5 million housing project and over Hundreds of thousands of dollars of increased insurance costs deserve more discussion than two janitorial positions that will cause, cost the city $130,000? Apparently not, since both of the aforementioned issues receive minimal discussion on the council floors. Would not a discussion on an independent audit insurance request might have brought to light the situation of the health insurance increased cost and future me, liability honey. to the city? Your Thank minute you. is up. Thank you. That's it. That's it? Yep. Okay, moving along, consent agenda, to items 22.1 through 22.15. President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I'd move that all ROs be accepted and placed on file, and all RCs be accepted and adopted. Second. Motion and second, under discussion. There is none, please call the roll. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hanna? Aye. Heideman? Excuse me, Kittleson, Cleunis, Meyer, Aye. Montemayor, Aye. Ryan, Aye. Surik, Vanderweel, Verhasselt, Wangaman, and Bulk. 14 ayes. Motion carries. Communications and petitions 2216 through 2218 to be referred. Report of officers 2, 2219 and 2220 uh, applies over to March 2nd. Moving along the agenda pretty quick. <laughs> All right, 2221 through 2235 to be referred. Resolutions introduced three, 2236 by Alderman Bourne, authorized the city attorney to engage the services of special outside legal counsel to represent the law and licensing committee and counsel with regard to a quasi-judicial hearing for the suspension slash revocation of Class B alcohol license number 2521, Bureau Culinary Schools, LLC, Marcel Bureau Agent, and authorizing payment for said services. That's a long one, but we got it. Alderman Wangerman. Uh, Please do. Thank you, Your Honor. I make a uh, motion that the uh, Resolution be accepted and adopted. Motion to put the resolution upon its passage. Okay. And there's a second under discussion. Under discussion, uh, this has to do with the uh, license for the uh, Mr. Bureau. He uh, 
is close to the point or has gone beyond the point where he has failed to conduct business. And in Sheboygan, we have a use it or lose it clause as far as license goes. Uh, he has not responded to any of our contacts. Uh, I have information he perhaps has even left town, we don't know. So we uh, need to uh, remove the license from him and it is necessary to do this through a quasi-judicial hearing upon the uh, advice of the uh, assistant city attorney. Very, very good, thank you very much, Alman Waterman. Any, any other discussion? There being none, please call the roll. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunas? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Surik? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Bulk? Aye. And Decker? Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. 2237 to 2239 flies over. 2240 through 2242, no, 2241 to be, ref not to, to be 2240 and 2242 to be referred. We got a report committee. We need to accept and adopt that, don't we? Um, that's also referred. That's also referred? Yeah, it's public works. Public works. Never mind. Being referred. You were right. Report of committees uh, 7. 2243 by law and licensing, recommending denying beverage operators license number 8141 based upon the applicant's record of violations related to the license activity which makes her ineligible to hold the license until January 7th, 2010. Alwin Wang. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. I uh, make a motion that the report of committee be accepted and adopted. Is there a second? Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. Uh, under discussion. Is uh, Amanda C. White in the chamber this evening? Amanda? Okay, if you would. Would you like to step forward, please? And Can we read first and then? Uh, on the advice of the city attorney, her application for license was uh, denied uh, due to the uh, record of violations. Uh, she's been charged with three liquor or four liquor law violations. Uh, three operating after revocation violations and a disorderly conduct violation. And according to the advice of Mr. Adams, he said this would make her ineligible for the license. So we had uh, the committee then did uh, vote unanimously to deny the license. Very good. Thank you very much, Alban Wagaman. And Amanda, you wish to address the council with respect to your matter? Please step forward, podium. We need you to state your name and address. My name is Amanda Christine White, 1924 South 12th Street, Sheboygan. Okay. Um, I just wanted to say about this, um, the violation that he said that was stopping me from getting my liquor license was from a 1999 incident. Um, that would make it 10 years ago. I'm 27. That would have been 17 years old I was. Um, at the last council meeting I was at, the person in front of me had numerous, numerous violations. He had two drunk drivings, he had a restraining order violation, and he is also currently on probation. Um, I just feel that I was kind of unfairly denied because of my underage fine, which I was a child, I made a mistake. I mean, I'm trying to work as an adult in this community and take care of my family, and I just, I don't know what else to do. It took me seven months to get the job that I have now that I need this license for. So I just, that's why I'm here tonight. I just want to say, like, if there's any reason that this could be granted to me, it would really help me out in my situation. I have two children. I have a husband. And I'm trying to be a working adult, a working parent. I want to show my children that I can go to work every day and, you know, make a living. So let me ask you, Amanda, did you have an opportunity to plead your case before the Law and Licensing Committee? Um, I, yes, I did. Um, I was kind of blanked when I went up there to speak. I, you know, it's kind of difficult to get up and talk in front of people. So mm -hmm. I just went up there, and um, they did make another mistake with my name, saying that I had $140 worth of parking violations, and I've never owned a vehicle. Um, so um, the looking into it for my name, it was... It was a mistake, you know, on their part, they didn't look at my full name or my social security number, so I feel that I never would have had a question about getting my licenses if it wasn't for the whole name mix up in the first place, okay. so. Is that all you wish to say at this moment? Yes, but I do have my manager with me and she would like to say something as well, if that would be okay. 
Okay, go ahead. Okay. And we need your name and address. Oh, okay. <laughs> Hello, I'm Molly Limberg, um, 324 Smith Street, Plymouth, Wisconsin. Um, I've hired Amanda. She's done an amazing job. It seems that she's had a struggle um, proving her identity and with two different Amanda Whites. And from what I gather, one is on North 12th Street and she lives on South 12th Street. And um, she said, apparently from what I've gathered from all of this is that she's told she's had a drunk driving which does not belong to her and appears that that's on her record and seems as to why we're here at this meeting tonight trying to gather and find these facts. Um, we do run a CCAP on our employees, which is general information to all the public and um, didn't have this in, um, on her record. So we're just trying to do the right thing as an employer at Sheboygan Oil and put all the right people in the right places to do the right thing. So that's Thank what you. I have to say. Thank you very much. Alderman Wagman. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I guess I have to uh, go back to the opinion of the city attorney, and he made it quite clear that she is ineligible at this point and will not be eligible until January 7th, 2010. And this is uh, what we based uh, our decision on was, was his advice that under the statute she is not eligible at this time to receive a license, Okay. unfortunately. Thank you. Next we have Alderman Ryan. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, now, we, we had six, I believe, six different violations listed, uh, including a disorderly conduct, uh, driving after revocation, and I don't know what else there were, were, if I may ask, Ms. White, were those your violations? You need, you need to be in the mic. Yes, I admitted to all of those in my initial application. May I ask, um, when was your last violation that was listed there? Um, Um, the one of 2007, which was my disorderly conduct. I believe that was my last violation whatsoever. Thank you. Alderman Bout, next. Thank you, Your Honor. I just, I'm not sure procedurally, can we send it back and ask them to confirm her identity and, and what exactly belongs to her before we vote on this? Right, I was going to say, uh, basically three options. You can accept the recommendation of the decision of law and licensing not accept it, grant the license, or refer it back so that they can clear up some of those uh, uh, misrepresentations. Uh, I'd move to send it back, Your Honor. Is there a second sure. to that? Second. There's a motion to refer back to the Law and Licensing Committee under discussion on the referral on the motion to refer back. There is none. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. What that means is it's going to go back so you have an opportunity to plead your case again. In the meantime, it would be wise for you to gather all the information and, and evidence that you have to plead your case again. Okay. Okay? Thank you. Thank you very much. Next item on the agenda, uh, uh, agenda would be 2244. That's to be referred. Report of Committee 8, 2245 by Finance, recommending authorizing the hiring of Davis and Kilthow. SC as outside labor attorneys to assist the city through the collective bargaining strategy development and negotiation process for the successor labor contracts to the current 2007-9 contracts. Alderman Misha. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the uh, report of committee be accepted and adopted and the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second under discussion. Alderman Hanna, President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm going to vote against this on a couple different reasons. First, it's a significant amount of money. And I think at the very least, uh, if we were buying a $10,000 pickup truck, we'd put it out to bid. Uh, at the very least, it should be put out for, for bids. It's no different than any other services we're looking at, whether it's CPA firms or whatever. So I'm, I'm opposed to that. The second issue is really a practical. We just hired a human resources director with an extensive resume. I think she should be given the opportunity to determine whether she needs outside counsel to assist her in union negotiations. Thank you. Next we have Alderman Gisham. Thank you, Your Honor. And uh, Alderman Hannah and I have had spirited conversations regarding this. Um, Davis and Keithall has worked with the city for about a year and a half and has provided uh, excellent service to us. That being said, they've also already done the contract review on a vote of this council to approve funds to 
review our current union contracts. No attorney will use someone else's work product. They won't take the report from Davis and Keithall and, and use that. They'll start from scratch all over again. We have a longstanding relationship, and I agree with Alderperson Hannah uh, that it's a, a great thing and timing-wise to have a new um, city attorney, labor relations, uh, per or city uh, HR person. And I had a discussion with her regarding this matter just prior to the council meeting and uh, um, told her of this resolution and asked her her opinion and she felt very strongly it would be of help to her. This would be on an on-call basis for her. They wouldn't be taking over her statutory responsibilities. If she needs help, this is a resource. It's a great resource. They represent virtually uh, every municipality our size in the entire state of Wisconsin. There isn't another law firm that does that and the past history they've had with the city and knowing the city and have already reviewed the contracts. This is just kind of a natural evolution. So it's a great backstop for her and resource for her. As you see from her resume, she doesn't have state of Wisconsin municipal experience. Davis and Keithall does. She's new to the city. Davis and Keithall knows the city's been working with us and reviewed our contracts and doing so for about a year and a half. I think it would be a great advantage to her and I think she felt the same way. I don't want to put words in her mouth, but um, she had uh, certainly very, if she wishes to speak, I suppose she can't, but uh, she thought it would be of an assistance to her. Thank you. Next we have Alderman Belk. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd uh, echo Alderman Gish's comments. Uh, we met as a committee of the whole uh, two or four weeks ago uh, in closed session. This is mainly for the people out uh, in the city. Uh, we met uh, and had a great conversation with that firm. And I, I think it was the unanimous vote of everybody at, there that uh, even with this fee, that they could more than recoup that fee. There would be a very high return on that investment in their help in what we could get out of the uh, um, out of the negotiations. And it's certainly that's not guaranteed, but uh, it was the uh, the collective uh, expectation that we would get a lot out of it. And I would, uh, again, echo his comments that lacking uh, municipal experience in Wisconsin, I think they can help the new HR director a great deal. Thank you, Your Honor. Very good. Thank you. Alderman Bauk. Alderman Bauk. Oh, thank you. I respectfully disagree with Alderman Bauk. I specifically asked them if we could put them on an incentive-based pay so that they would be paid based upon what they saved the city, and they did not want to accept that. Okay. Any other discussion? Otherwise, we will call for the vote. Please call the roll. Heidemann? No. Excuse me? No. Thank you. Kittleson? Aye. Clyunas? No. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Ryan? Surik? No. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Wangaman? No. Bulk? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? No. Nine eyes, five noes. Motion carries. 2246 by finance recommending authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 2009 budget establish an appropriation for contractual services. Thank you, Your Honor. This is a apparent resolution, I believe, to the previous matter we discussed, so I move that the report of committee be accepted and adopted and the resolution be put upon its passage. Thank you. Is there a second to that? Second. Second. Under discussion. There is none. Please call the roll. Kittleson? Aye. Clyunas? No. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Ryan? Surik? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Wangaman? No. Balk? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? No. And Heidemann? No. Ten ayes, four noes. Motion carries. Ordinance introduced 10, uh, 2247 to be referred. Matters laid over 11, 2132, resolution number 196-0809. By all the person Meyer authorizing executing a one year lease for the agricultural property in the town of Wilson, formerly owned by John Poth Jr. Alderman Meyer. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second under discussion. Attorney McLean, do you wish to say uh, Yes, Your Honor. This is regards to the last uh, vote. Uh, that's a budget alteration that requires two thirds of all the members of the council, which would be 11. And you only got 10, I believe, was the count, so it should not pass. Yes. Didn't it pass? We stand corrected. The, uh, the uh, 2245 did not pass. Yes. If I could just uh, add as a comment, 
it was one of those situations where you've got the original uh, approving resolution that requires a majority vote, but in order to put the money in place, it requires a two-thirds vote. Anybody want to reconsider? Yes. Alderman Gishin. I'd like to ask for a reconsideration from the chair, please. I'm sorry. It would have to be somebody that voted no. We have to ask for reconsideration. It, it, it needs to be somebody that voted no to file a, to make a motion to reconsider, and it can be a second from anybody. Anybody? I withdraw the motion. <laughs> <laughs> I understood that. <laughs> Make I'll ask one more time. Is there anybody that wishes to reconsider? There is not. We'll move on. 2246, uh, did we take a vote on that? <coughs> Which one? 46? That was 46. We were I'm sorry. About, yeah. we're, we're at 22. We're at 2132. 2132 resolution to put, yep. uh, the motion to put the resolution upon his passage was made. It was second. Any discussion on that? There is none. Please call the roll. Clayunas? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Zurich? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Wangeman? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heideman? Aye. And Kittleson? Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. 2133, resolution number 197-0809 by the person Montemayor, authorizing the correction of the legal description for the sale of city-owned land at 926 Broden Drive. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. I move the resolution be put upon its passage. Motion and second, under discussion. There is nine. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. 2144, general ordinance number 770809 by older person Hannah relating to the parking so as to create a one hour parking zone on a portion of Broden Drive. Alderman Hannah. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the ordinance be put upon its passage. Motion and second, under discussion. There is none. Please call the roll. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Zurich? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Wangeman? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heideman? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. And Clayunas? Aye. 13 ayes, 1 no. Motion carries. Other matters authorized by law. We have 2248 in RC by the Marina Committee recommending filing documents submitting a communication from Pro Tour Promotions requesting, a per requesting permission to hold a water cross racing event at Deland Park in 2009 and approving the request. Uh, Alderman Gishin. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the uh, report of committee be accepted and adopted. Second. Is there a second? Second. Under discussion. There is none. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. I see Mike Kinzel looking at his watch. It's pretty unusual for half an hour, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> you like me. Uh, what's that? It's not even a Packer game on. Not even a Packer game on, I heard. <laughs> <laughs> 2249 and 50 are to be referred. We have other matters. Uh, Attorney McLean. I don't have them there. Okay. 2251 is a communication from Terry Strube, Executive Director of Safe Harbor of Sheboygan County, Inc., asking what the process would be for replacing their current city loan secured on the property they own at 913 North 6th Street and replacing the loan they currently have with a loan against the new property they have purchased. Um, Hannah, you have a question? Yeah, just a, a, a question for clarification. Uh, Attorney McLean, uh, didn't the original request come through a bank? Because wasn't it part of a tax exempt? Offering this on that. Uh, Just I, I, I think this, this separate from this that? Uh, wasn't the uh, wasn't industrial the bond revenue issue. bond. Okay. This Thank was you. a prior great uh, uh, loan. That will be referred to Housing Rehab Committee. Uh, hold on, Sir McLean. Hold on, Mr. Question on another matter. On another matter. On another matter. On another matter. On another matter? On a, a previous matter. <laughs> Just a clarification. Please do. Thank you. On uh, 2249, uh, you noted that it would be referred. Uh, it came out of Marina and Harbor, and I'm wondering if it's being referred back to Marina and Harbor. 2249 is being referred uh, to it's finance. finance. It's going to finance? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Sit it's been a long day. Yes. <laughs> we'll forgive you. Okay, please continue, Attorney McLean. 2252 is a communication from Tom Hornets, Engineering Department, requesting the city sponsor the Wisconsin 
geospatial user group seminar conference to be held at Blue Harbor Conference Center on June 1 through 3, 2009. That will uh, go to finance. 2253 is a communication from the John Michael Kohler Art Center requesting permission for two double-sided banners advertising the art armada and the Midsummer Festival of the Arts be hung across 8th Street and be installed at no charge as the art armada is part of the city's 4th of July celebration. That will go to Public Works. 2254 is an RO by the city clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending June 30, 2009 and June 30, 2010. And that will go to law and licensing. Need a motion to adjourn it. Motion to adjourn it. Is there a second?